Welcome to Dr. Three, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to giving you explosive growth in climbing the standard ranked ladder. I'm your host, Daring Alkaline, and along with me are my fellow hosts, Grandmasters and Master Scorecaster, Dragon Rider, and Major Death. It's been a it's been a heck of a week. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. So and a live show. We and are we're doing this. Live. We're doing it live, everybody. <laughs> it is, in fact, live, and that's the most exciting part. But live still... from New York. Oh, wait, <laughs> sorry, no. <laughs> wrong show. Wrong show. Multiple locations. <laughs> there, the, yeah, we're we're already getting questions about where your mic is located and everything. It's it's. Yes, it's normal. He's he's got it where he needs it, and and we're all good. Here. Yes, um, my mic is right here. See, back. Yeah, uh, just just like mine. It's actually basically just below. It's the, yeah. It's just the, the, it's, just I, just below the <laughs> webcam. Yeah, I exactly. Was gonna say, I think honestly, for like professional and like not having your mic visible, it's preference based. Like I, I feel like some people prefer to not have it on camera and depending on what you're doing like it looks better to not have it on camera right me it's kind of just because like the angle that i have my camera at it's pointed more down so you see it and mm -hmm. if i put it down too low it doesn't really like <laughs> it doesn't really work very well like i would we can't, you know in my lap so. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i just it's it's just in front of me on my desk and literally right. i i have a i have a mic arm behind me that i haven't really used recently um i did not like it with the yeti i upgraded the sure mv7 so like i i've got it on a tripod so i like it feels close enough to me that it's in my face but it's not on cam which i don't care one way or the other in all honesty so all right we got yes. we're getting into the q a portion <laughs> of the show a little bit early we are so why don't we uh I, why don't, i'm gonna jump in with last week's poll question, we asked you, do you think balance changes are needed? And uh, apparently Blizzard had a vote in this as well and decided that they agreed with the 42.9% of you that said, yes, balance changes are needed. 38.1% said not sure. 19% said no. Uh, balance changes are not needed. There was 21 votes overall, so we'd like to thank all of you that voted. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about those balance changes, and we will also have a poll question for you to vote on and tell us your thoughts uh, for next week's show uh, near the end of this show. Excellent. So let us go into the news. As you mentioned, Blizzard had a vote, and today they launched <laughs> patch 23. 0 0.3. It brings balance changes to standards. Play, uh, patch also includes a change to wild, battlegrounds, and dual changes. So in the standard changes, we have Kazakasan. Old battle cry is if minions in your deck are dragons, uh, craft a custom deck of treasures. New battle cry, if you played four other dragons this game, craft a custom deck of treasures. So instead of just checking your deck, you have had to have played four dragons. Not summoned, but played. So yes. So you have to play four dragons to get the uh, Kazakasan uh, deck effect. Then we have Miracle Growth. Used to cost seven. Now it costs eight. Secure the supplies. This is the third portion of the warrior quest line. Um, raid the docks. Old. Play two pirates. New. Play three pirates. So the, they added another pirate to the quest line. Then we have the puffer fist. Old three four. It now it's a three three. And switcheroo. Old draw, draw two minions. Swap their stats. New draw two minions. Swap their health. The cards listed above will be eligible for full dust refunds until May twelfth. Um, so bug fixes cards like twin bow, twin bow, terror coil and electra storm surge will now only work on spells that you cast from your hands rather than spells cast by other cards you control, such as Nogglings, 
or cast when draw cards. We'll discuss these changes more in the main topic. Yeah, there's a lot to dig in there. So yeah. We- we're, we're going to use that as our main topic today. I did not know that the uh, the bug fix was a problem until, like, I want to say yesterday or maybe the day before. I saw some some comments on, on, on Twitter about it. So that was, like, a very late to – I was very late <laughs> to the party when it came to that. So, yeah, it was, it was weird that they, it was – we've seen this kind of situation occur before where we had – uh, the Arcanist, where it would apply a buff to the next spell, but then if you were able to do spells like that were cast when drawn, you could keep getting the effect on because it was the next spe- spell that was basically play that you p- played as opposed to something that was like cast when drawn. So it was getting uh, you were getting some additional bonuses from that. So. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. It all. It also. You know what that shows to me. It's like programming this game can be hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we've talked about it before, but it's just you're you're trying to you know eat the spaghetti, and sometimes it gets a little bit messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. I I will we'll talk about the specific cards and our thoughts and stuff on that during the main topic, but I do have to say. <sighs> Last week, right? We talked about this. We're like, and then I said something to the effect of, I don't think there's going to be any kind of changes or patch because uh, at this point, they probably won't do it until after the Masters Tour. (laughs) I said that. (laughs) And then, like, a day and a half later, you know, Gallon tweeted, like, hey, there's going to be nerfs. We're going to be putting them out next week. I was like, so. I have to redact my statement from last week. And now I think at this point, I think at this point, I am just going to, you know, look ahead and say, okay, what is the date of the master's tour? What is the Tuesday before the master's tour? That's the day <laughs> we'll get changes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. think, I'm just going to flip the opposite way now. Cause uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, they, Oh gosh. They, they kind of am. Get, are getting to the point where they're getting into a bit of a habit of doing this now, aren't they? Right. Yeah. The last, the last few Masters tours feel like they've had some, some balance changes that yeah. same week of of them for the last couple, which makes prepping for them, I think, probably very, very difficult. Yeah, I am not envious of the people going to this Master tour. <laughs> oh. So, um. Then we have April 21st hotfix address bugs. So this is just some uh, little changes in standard here. So it fixes a bug that allowed barb nets to trigger two ticks of the hunter quest line under certain certain circumstances. I don't know what those circumstances were, but um, yeah, that'd be really good if it did, in fact, trigger the quest line twice. It's I yeah I don't know what it was it, it seems like it had something to do with like when you were transitioning from one stage of the quest to the next stage of the quest I think it was happening uh. and, and, and and when and it also had you had to be targeting two different minions so have that extra target go uh you know happen because you played a naga while this thing was in your hand so it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of the i think yeah. that was the situation that that this was occurring but yeah now it's one spell it's only going to trigger one time which is probably what they intended from the start i would imagine so it yeah, also i think it was unintended that it actually triggered yeah. twice because you're it's for the damage spells but you're only playing one spell, right? Not Correct. you're not playing two different spells. You were just playing one spell, and it was targeting two different things. So yeah, it. I, I think it, it definitely makes sense that like that was probably not how they intended it. It's, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. It's one. Of, it's one of those things where it's again, programming a video game is hard, and yeah. so if if it basically maybe they wrote it so that it basically just triggered this way. So, they triggered the spell twice then it was actually for the quest was counting it as twice in these certain circumstances and 
they needed to go back and and tweak the the code so that it didn't count it as twice. Um, it's 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 really easy to, to have something like that happen. And then they fix a bug where multi-strike would prevent a player from attacking the enemy hero with Kurtris Demon Render. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that must have been annoying for Demon Hunter players. <laughs> like, okay, I've got my sweet hero. We're going to multi-strike and go fit. Oh, wait, why, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got like 20 attack now and I can't click their face. <laughs> so, uh that's a good one so yeah so that was just a server side fix that occurred late last week so you didn't have to download anything for that but the patch that launched today obviously you did have to download a an update to the client so then we have the leroy bundle is available in the in-game shop <laughs> Very yes. good. Very good. <laughs> yes. At least, at, least, at least I have a chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we finally have a Leroy Jenkins hero portrait for Paladin, and it comes with a card back and five standard Paladin packs for $15. Cont portrait contains its own unique animations, visual effects, and emotes. The bundle is available until May 10th. I usually don't go for the $15 bundles, but... I mean, it's Leroy Jenkins. I know, right? It's like I kind of have to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Leroy. laughs> it's, it's I don't I don't want to, but at the same time, I really want to. So I think I think the need to have a Leroy Jenkins hero is going to outweigh my my not buying all, every single uh, you know portrait that comes out. Plus, plus unique animation. So it's going to be completely different, too. So, like, I just, I, I, I feel like I haven't seen what it does yet, but, like, I feel it's going to be really freaking cool. And you're going to be mm -hmm. like, I'm glad I yeah. spent $15 <laughs> on this. <laughs> yeah. Is it, so. uh, it's just um, money, so you can't get it with gold, right? I don't think you can get it with gold. The The screenshots that I've seen have only listed uh, a real money transaction option. Okay. Eh. Well, okay. So, and this is a FYI card information you might not be aware of. So, for the warrior... Uh, uh, colossal. Colossal. I, could, I was thinking gargantuan, or <laughs> it was just not not the correct word there is logic in my head i'm not going to explain it but uh mm -hmm. nelly's crew is visible in the history bar after the card is played and the crew selected so once your opponent plays nelly if you hover over the uh the action in the um history bar it will show you the three pirates that were chosen so you get to see um, Mr. Smite and whatever two other pirates. Are <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah is is that is that a, a bug? Because to me that seems like you shouldn't know that information. Because like, what was the point? But at the same time, it also makes sense because it's like I did not know that I, honestly until you put it in yeah. these notes and I saw that I was like, what? This whole time I could have been like looking over at the little side thing and knowing what my opponent had instead of mm -hmm. guessing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you always just assume they have Mr. You, you get to but... see what other two pirates are going to be hitting you in the face next turn. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I I didn't know it either. I, I just saw saw that you could do that this week. And so I wanted to make sure yeah. everyone was aware of this. And yeah, before it was like, well, I needed to decide, am I killing the ship and giving them the three pirates or not? Well, if they get Mr. Smite, then it's, then I don't want to do it. But if they didn't, then maybe I can consider doing it. And little did I know I could actually just, you know, hover over the, the history bar and actually see, see that. So, um, so yeah, so that is... That is definitely a thing. You don't have to guess. I I think 
I think it's a feature. I think I think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be that way. I think um, it would make sense to me that that is. These are cards that are being generated basically by something that you've voluntarily shown your opponent by playing it. So I think that that allows you the opportunity to see what it is they selected. It makes sense to me that you can look at it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's in that sense, it's very similar, I think, to um, how you can look and see like, oh, gosh, uh, why am I drawing a blank? What the... <laughs> Describe the, the card. One. Describe the card, Dragon Rider. We'll we'll do our best now. The warlock colossal. Uh the um Megafin. Megafin, thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's been a day. It's been a day. Uh um, you're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Gigafin or Megafin? Gigafin. Gigafin, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I was close. I don't know. I was just you like, got, yeah, you got what that I was one. talking about. <laughs> uh yeah, and that one when you when it eats all of the minions, then uh, you can you can hover over it and it'll show you that same thing. I mean, obviously those were already on board, but I feel like the the similarity is there, so it makes sense sure. that it would it would show. Yeah. Okay. So, Mage, you want to go over this next interaction because I have not played any Demon Hunter, so and you said you've played this deck yeah. plenty. Yeah, so so it's it's regarding the use of multi strike and specifically I, I I have not done this personally, but you you can use two multi strikes in the same turn, and it actually allows the demon hunter to attack three times. And there's some argument here a little bit as to uh you know how many times you get to hit face, how many times you hit minions, but I I know when you use a single multi-strike, you can hit a minion and then hit face, or you can hit face, then you can hit a minion. It really doesn't doesn't seem to matter the order of them. Um, at least, at least what I've seen is like I usually end up hitting the minion first, and then I hit face, and and so that works. But I'm pretty sure you get to you can if you attack if you use both the multi strikes and then you attack a minion i think you might actually be able to attack face twice which would i i need to do we probably need to do some more testing on that but the example that i saw it does not happen frequently but i think i saw where somebody attacked a minion played two multi strikes attacked a minion and then was able to attack face twice which to me seemed a little weird, but it it works. It would end up working kind of the same way it does with one multi strike, in that you can attack a minion and then you can attack face, which I know you can do, because that's why the vanguard play with uh, with multi strike is so powerful. Because if they have just one minion on the board, you can attack the minion and then attack face, and you can get four one ones on the board with the vanguard. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's, cool. It's like a really weird card that we haven't seen before. And then the wording is different. And then, yeah. then like you said, you get that added layer of like playing two in one turn and like, how does that affect things? Cause it's, it's also right. the same if you've played just two over the course of the game and then you play uh Jace, it, you get both of those. So it, that happens. And, and uh, I can't remember if I tried that, uh during fair crafting or the first like couple days of the expansion but i did that and i was like whoa oh i got to you know like <laughs> so many attacks like yeah just because it's such an interesting and different kind of card but yeah there there's been all sorts of like discussion and stuff lately over the the wording of it too because it's it's one that you really have to play with or seen played to really get it it's it's not super clear to everyone the way it's worded so yeah it's it's a powerful card and i think it's a card that's going to see a lot of play over the next oh uh, yeah two years of standard basically so yeah. so yeah i think i think we're gonna get old hats with this particular card here at some point but 
right now as we're still kind of learning the interactions with this card. Just something to keep in mind that, uh, you know, if you're trying to play around attacks and things, know that that if they play two multi strikes, they may be able to attack three different uh, three different times. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, that's it for the regular news. Uh, what do we have for Master Swords Dragon uh, Dragon Rider? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Dragon. Dragon Rider. Dragon Rider. Take it away. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just for for people who might not get that, yeah, we were yeah. doing our live episode, and Daring was uh, starting uh, to put out the tweet and started typing Dragon Rider instead <laughs> of Dragon Rider for the uh, the Twitch. It's channel. an easy so mistake to make. It it is. I did not I send just... it out. It did the tweet <laughs> yeah. did read Dragon Rider. So yes. And in solidarity, we're all going to be Dargons from now on. Both, all, all three of us, everyone in the chat room, I think everybody's agreed. <laughs> we're, all we're all Dargons now. Yeah. We're all Dargons here. <laughs> yes. That's right. So, yes, yeah, a little bit of uh, like an inside joke there. But, you know, we'll, we'll see if we remember. If we remember about this, we'll keep it going, I think, because it's funny. <laughs> That's got to be a but good I'll... live show thing, if nothing else, right? Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay, so I already mentioned earlier, yeah, chip balance changes right before the Masters Tour. So let's talk about this upcoming Masters Tour. It is happening this coming weekend, which is, I, the dates are going to sound a little weird, but I'll get to that in just a second because of the timing. So starting on thursday april 28th through saturday april 30th uh, the broadcast will be starting at 11 p.m pacific time right so <laughs> very late for us uh in the in the u.s or you know in in this part of the world but uh that's because they they switch back. They're rotating in through the times. So I think the last one was based off of European time. And then now this one is uh, Asia Pacific time. So and we're getting that rotation again on the time. So, yeah, it's going to be very late for, for some of us. So, you know, you might have to go back and watch the VOD. But however you end up watching it, it is going to be the standard conquest best of five. So... You're going to bring four decks or the players are, that are competing are going to bring four decks. They'll have to ban one deck and then win with the other three. And it is Swiss. So we're going to see uh, day one is going to be the first four rounds of Swiss. Day two is going to be the other four rounds. And then day three is going to be uh, top 16 all the way to the finish to crown the winner. It is a $250,000 prize pool, which is, just still sounds so crazy to me. Uh, but there also are, of course, doing the drops again. So on the YouTube channels, if you go watch it at any point while it's live, you just have to watch two hours and you will get a Voyage to the Sunken City card pack and then another two hours. They don't have to be consecutive. So just, you know. You can watch it spread out over the weekend. Um, you know, maybe a few like it is <laughs> the middle of the night for some of us. Uh, try to put on first thing in the morning for a couple hours or something just to get those card packs if you're looking for that or you know, however you're able to do it. So um, it's going to be pretty exciting. I think we're going to talk a little bit about it in our main topic as well. Kind of how the these changes, card changes might affect the Masters Tour. But uh yeah, I'm really excited for for this master store as well, and I know we'll talk about it a little more as it comes up. But I'm also looking forward to more of the uh, funnel tournaments that they're doing. Right, so they're starting with like the you have the masters tour qualifiers that lead to the masters tour, and then they're going to have even more. And this year's um, world championship is going to include more than just grandmasters. So like, I'm I'm so excited for the whole road, and then. We'll see what happens next year because next year it's not just going to be on YouTube. So, you know, maybe they're going to do more with that and not having grandmasters at all. It's going to be going to be exciting. But uh, this is our our next master's tour here. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know how much of it I'm gonna get to watch though because of the the timing for for us for this one. I always go. I, I'm always watching the vods. Like yeah. I'm always like fast forwarding and rewinding because I try and pay attention. And if I'm not able to pay attention, I'll like put my phone away or you know I'll pause it and come it back. YouTube keeps your place. That's one thing I will say about YouTube is nice. It keeps your place and um you can just pick it back up. Also, they've been doing really good. I don't know if you've watched um, after the fact, but they segment their videos now too. So you can go uh, round one, round two. And like, also, it's nice that it, um, they, especially on the final day, they don't give anything away when it's segmented. So it's like semifinal one, semifinal two, final. So like, you don't see who is the winner when you go up to go through the, <laughs> yeah. you know, so uh, my recommendation is stay off Twitter. If you don't want to see who the winner is. So I try and I try and like enjoy it and, you know, enjoy the hype of the moment. But sometimes you go on Twitter and Gabby's like, I won the master tour. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> oh man. I'm just like, ah, uh, I wish I hadn't seen it, but okay. I'm good. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which okay random random thought here but i guess we're kind of still in the tournament segment uh i i am trying to run monthly tournaments now for my uh, aspire esports center so i will plug now because uh, i'll plug it next week as well but just to give a heads up uh, i'm gonna be setting it up for uh next saturday may 7th it's like not this coming saturday but may 7th uh, I will be running my next tournament. I think I'll make it a best of five. First one was a best of three, but I think uh, this best of five is going to be pretty good. So, if uh, if anybody wants to join a, you know, join the tournaments, low stake, you know, kind of get get some tournament experience, then would love to have you join. And I'm going to work on getting some, uh, at least one other caster to join me, and we'll we'll put that up on YouTube and everything. But yeah, tournaments I'm so excited for. And we'll see. There's They're doing a whole lot more with um, Battlegrounds tournaments as well. And like I said, you know, things with the shifting next year. I really, I really feel excited about the future of uh, content creation because of uh, Alkali mm -hmm. announcing a little bit more about the creator program that's also coming. Yep. And, you know, they're changing up the tournament stuff. So I, I don't know. Personally, I'm really excited for kind of the future of, of Hearthstone and the competitive side and content creation. So I, I would love for all of you to join me in that. Yes, yes. Also, if you need someone to help you cast, hit me up later and maybe we can get something going. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So main topic, the, the reason we're all here tonight is nerfs, nerfs, nerfs. <laughs> uh it is about time. So this is the second time Kazakhstan is getting hit. <laughs> Remember when Locust was a card you could pick? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know I'm that glad card? that didn't last I, long. <laughs> I, I, I blocked that out of my mind. <laughs> do you remember a yeah. single card that cost eight mana that could do 28 damage? <laughs> and you got two of them. That's 56 damage from hand. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. 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 <laughs> too much, too much. I'm sorry, but it was a thing. <laughs> it happened. Yes. Okay. We, so, we, all, we all survived that nightmare once. Let's not bring it back to us. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk the balance changes. And we put together some questions and we thought we'd discuss them. So maybe, first, maybe let's, let's let's talk about the individual cards themselves okay. first, because we 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 said what happened, and mm -hmm. just maybe some overarching thoughts on. Because like let's let's talk about Kazakazan first, because we've talked about Kazakazan and yeah. the fact that we didn't like the way that card worked, in that it checked for dragons basically at the time you played it. As mm -hmm. opposed to say the beginning of the game, or or what have you, um, it, it's interesting. You know, it, it we talked about a start of game effect. They decided to go with a 
if you played four other dragons. So kind of like the Hook Tusk treatment, right? Mm -hmm. Hook to, Captain Hook Tusk in this set, you have to play eight or you have to summon eight pirates in order for that battle cry to take effect. Um, are you guys happy with this change, with this rework of Kazakasan? Do you think it's 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 doing what 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 needed to be done in order for Kazakasan to be more like maybe what they had intended the card to be when they created it? Huh. I yes. What, but like I feel like the the baby got thrown out with the bathwater on this one because they're punishing Druid. Like they're this is to hit Druid, but it also hits Warrior and Priest. You know the other decks that were actually feasibly playing Kazakasan, correct? And and they weren't a problem. Like no one was fearing Control Warrior with the Kazakasan at the top end. No one was fearing Dragon Priest. Like, that wasn't a thing people were worried about hitting. Like, those weren't oppressive. Like, it's the package that everything Druid has, and it's um, it's it's definitely... I wish they would have gone with the start of game effect and required you to have so many dragons in your deck. And then Druid just, it wouldn't have been worth for Druid to play it anymore. It just wouldn't have been. So do you think that Druid shouldn't be able to play Kazakasan or, or that it shouldn't be? Like, like I, I know it's a neutral card. Mm -hmm. So Druid is going to always have access yeah. to it. But do you think, do you, do you feel like that they needed to make it so that it, like, to me, the problem isn't that it's, Kazakasan is available to Druid. It's the fact that Ramp is available to Druid. Yeah, and, that, and that's the, the thing. amount of card draw that is available to Druid means that you've got a situation here where you can get so much mana ahead of your opponent, and you can draw so many cards. You know, compared to your opponent. That that a card like Kazakasan ends up being good in Druid, because because you're right, Kazakasan isn't a problem in Priest. It isn't a problem in Warrior, but they're not playing it on turn five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, so it's like, yeah. um, and and even now, po like it, it it got to the point where like during the new expansion, once once Lightning Bloom and once Overgrowth were gone. It was still being played a lot later than it was before before the the rotation, but then it was it's kind of being used as an Elysiana in that it was basically once I exhausted my deck, I'm going to put ten more cards. Oh, by the way, these are ten of the most powerful cards you could possibly imagine yep. in my deck. That if you somehow manage to deal with all the eight eights. You know, all the giants, if you manage to deal with the Ivises, because you probably are going to see more than one because they probably mm -hmm. cloned it with the uh with Oracle, the Oracle. uh, you know, uh the miracle grow taunts, you know, any anything else uh, the Anixia, you know, if you somehow manage to get through all of that stuff. Oh, here here's these ten cards. Dragon Rider, please tell us your some thoughts. Yeah, I think I'm actually fine with the fact that like decks can use it in that late game, like Elysiana esque kind of way. But yeah, the the there was like no requirement, right? There was, I mean, I'm sure it says if your deck is no drug, okay. So then, I, I think for me the problem became well, then people were just not running any minions and you have a whole bunch of spells and like you're saying like ramp and other ways to do things uh scale of anixia creates a whole board of minions but it doesn't it's not actually a minion in itself so it's like it felt like there's no downside in druid specifically for uh including kazakasan so it was kind of it's kind of just like a okay like cool we can just play this and it's like fine there's no no drawback um whereas i think even in like control warrior i would say specifically like you you can't 
really play Control Warrior without other minions. Like you yep. can't just play Kazakasan and yep. then a bunch of spells. Like it doesn't really work the same. Exactly. And so I think for me, like that was where the big issue is. And the way that they're changing this does impact that. But on the other side, I know we, we talked about this before we started recording and people were talking about it in my stream today too. So uh, we're really going to start to see Amalgam everywhere, right? Like, yeah. Because it's going to count as the dragon. How's that different from now? Like, I'm like, really? Like, because Amalgam is in 90% of the decks I see? Like, it is. It's not in Druid, though. People aren't running no, it in Druid. No. So no, it, if people I mean, want to continue David. to use it in Druid, they're going to have to play more minions and, and use that and get the dragons in there. So I think that's the difference I, it's like this is such an interesting change to me i feel like because the way they're doing that is definitely impacting one class more than others i think because of the way decks are built right now which is such an interesting change because before it was just like oh okay well it's only impacting one class or uh you know you know you'd make a change and then people would be like well that card's never going to be played again but I don't think that's the case here. Yeah, I. My issue here is that like, Kazakhstan, like a number one, you're like the initial thing was like, well, it used to just you know look at your deck when you played it. I mean, they didn't care about that in the days of the Highlander cards. Like Zephyrus was frequently played in decks that had doubles and it's like okay now i can play zephyrus and it's yeah. like oh that seems like a uh small oversight on on their part but i i mean i think what bugs me is that the uh, what makes druid oppressive was not touched like yes kazakasan put that requirement in for kazakasan is going to make it um harder for Jura to use but scale of anixia that still comes down <laughs> yeah. guff still comes down right on time and the scale of anixia is such a stabilization tool it's ridiculous yeah. and if you can play scale of anixia guess what next turn you have no problem playing the uh the grove the uh wild or what uh, i forgot what the name of the card is the uh Miracle uh, growth. Miracle growth. Yeah. Miracle growth. You have no problem playing that the next turn instead. And it's just, it's just kind of like, I'm like, yes, I get it. It does do something, but like the thing that like the weakness of the deck should be aggro, like just straight up aggro should be able to push through Druid. But a lot of the times with a decent, not a good draw, but a decent draw, they can just, be like, oh, that was cute. You got me down to 11. Here, I'm a game like 20 life. Clear your board, and then you'll never see you'll never see the board again. And I just start hitting you with giant Naga giants, like or like two 30 30 if is. So it's just kind of like it, to me, it doesn't feel like the problem is solved. I get where they're coming from. I don't disagree, but I'm like, I really wanted guff or scale to be hit. It's so so two things. One, it's really hard that part of the problem is the class identity of Druid because the class identity of Druid is ramp. And mm -hmm. by having more mana, you get to do things, right? And you get to do things sooner than you would normally get to do things. So it, it's kind of weird from that standpoint. But to your point about scales, by the way, uh, Jay Alexander was doing kind of a rough tabulation in his head, and he's like, why aren't we calling this Rush Druid? Because if you look at the amount of Rush that is in that deck right now, between the scales of Anixia, the actual Anixia card, you've got the Kelp Keepers, you've got Ivis, you've got all of this stuff that you end up, you know, if you have a reasonably sized Ivis, you could end up having, like, almost 50 attack worth of rush over the course of a game. And that's not even counting what the treasures you might get off of, off of Kazakasan as well. It's, it's 
it's it's actually kind of crazy how how much you could potentially get in rush which is you know one of the biggest reasons i think this deck is so good is is you have the ability there was always been a drawback to not interacting with the board and ramping instead right and it was that you'd fall behind well it's gotten to the point where you can kind of ramp as well as play minions and like the kelp keeper is a fantastic card because you basically you you pay one mana that you couldn't ramp with right you can't ramp with one mana right now and you just invest that one mana on the board and then once you've invested five mana in spells which you very easily are going to do over the next three turns uh, you, you basically just have this 4-4 four four then that can help keep you from getting further behind. So it's it, it's actually it's actually quite quite crazy. And they did not address that. And and like if I I think there's a, a, a case to be made that you don't necessarily have to run Kazakasan in Druid and it still be a good deck. I think you could run I, I think you could not worry about the dragon thing. And just put the battle master in there and have the eight eights and 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 you would do pretty well, right? I, I think you people just, are already doing that. Yeah, that's like yeah. before I've the seen, patch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's just they knew it was coming, and they're like, "All right, let's put the right. battle masters in." And yeah. and okay, I just summoned four eight eights in a turn. Mm -hmm. Two of them survive. You've got to kill four eight eights. You've got right. to clear my board to make a dent. Yeah, yeah. I think it was meaty that was one of the big proponents of doing that so but but yeah there, there's there's definitely a, it, it, it's very interesting i'm very curious to see what what this does not only for druid who now has to somehow shoehorn in dragons if they want to play kazakasan but also you know you've got warrior you've got priest and and what they're going to do but it is interesting that it also sort of kind of opens up the idea that Paladin could run could could run Kazakhstan and they really couldn't before because they they had they have so many good minions that you want to play that aren't dragons, right? They've yeah. got a few dragons and you know obviously they have access to the to the neutral dragons, but like now you can still play the 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 four mana carryel you can still play the banner man you can still play you know some of those cards that you couldn't play with, with when you wanted to play Kazakhstan deck before and you can so now control warrior has a win or control paladin excuse me has a win condition now because now they can put Kazakhstan at the end of, end of that game and then still you know have the control tools like equality consecration or you know equality and uh blade master samuro and and some of that sort of thing and they still have uh, they got back bronze explorer the the two three that yeah. discovers another dragon and mm -hmm. the five drop that that heals for eight yeah the so watcher. those are yeah so those were like things they were probably going to play anyways and the bronze explorer Hey, that's two dragons and one. <laughs> that could be yeah. three dragons and one if you hit the Amalgadon. <laughs> so, like, oh, and they buffed it. The chat saying they buffed it to a three-three now, even too. Yes, the, yes, the yeah, it Explorer. is. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's it's a good card. It's a good card, and it's a good control tool. And now it it, it leads to something. So, like it makes sense if Paladin were to start playing that too, because they also have a lot of stall. So, and they have a few good um, tradable cards. So like, I feel like, yes, that could definitely um, lead towards a Kazakhstan package, especially because their control package is very solid. Let's so we've talked a lot about Kazakhstan, and I think we should briefly talk about the other cards before we get nah. into the other questions we have. But I do like this question from the chat. It, so, do you disenchant Kazakhstan right now? Um, generally, the the general wisdom I've always heard is yes. 
you and keep the dust. You keep yeah. the dust. Don't don't spend the dust on yes. something else. Right you away. keep the dust for yeah for a period of time, and then you decide if you want Kazakhstan back. If you do, you care after him again. If not, you got your full sixteen hundred for him. So yeah, I, I feel like the card's going to be good enough to play. Yeah, e- even, I, even with this even with this rework, I think it's mm-hmm. good enough to play. I don't think I'm going to disenchant. Kazakhstan. I don't. I don't have a gold version of it necessarily, but like just having a regular version, I don't think I would disenchant it because I think I think the card's going to be worth playing again. If not now, like I think it's going to. I think it's going to be good at various points over the next uh, over the over the next year when it while it's still in, in standard. So it's I it's a build around cards, and it's not a bit like the card itself didn't get worse. The requirements got more stringent. Which yeah. means someone will find a way to use that deck, and it will or that card, and it will be a <laughs> yeah. good card. Mm-hmm. It will yeah. be a good deck. So I say, from the point of like it, you know, the the standard wisdom is to say yes, but the card isn't bad now. It's not. It's not been made worse. It's not been made pl- unplayable. It's just slower, and it's very. Uh, specific on what needs to happen so i say hold on to it in all honesty yeah uh, i I mean for me personally i think if it's a golden one especially i would i would disenchant oh if it's a golden one (laughs) if it's a golden one you can disenchant it craft a regular regular one and then still 1600 dust left yeah Yeah, exactly so if you have have a golden one I would definitely disenchant that. And then if you, know, yeah, you could just, I mean, unless like, unless playing with a golden copy of it is that important to you. But if you're looking at the dust for it, because you want to craft other cards or other decks, then like for me, hands down, I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's dust and uh, disenchant that bad boy and uh, get something else out of it. <laughs> golden so- treasures. I mean, <laughs> sure. It is. It is very true. All right. So the other druid change that we got was Miracle Growth goes from seven mana to eight mana. I think this is great because it the wild growth into guff into Miracle Growth was just too smooth a curve, Mm -hmm. and and like any time that and because Miracle Growth is now more expensive, it makes it more difficult to play Earthen Scales on it potentially in the same turn Mm -hmm. um so so now you need nine mana instead of eight mana in order to be able to to do that because a lot of times they're playing the big taunt and they're playing the earthen scales to get a bunch of uh health or armor i guess on top of the fact that they just put a big taunt on the board so i think making that curve of ramp ramp big taunt plus armor uh, a little bit more difficult. I think it, I think it's a good thing and it helps, you know, you were talking about aggro decks being able to kind of get this deck down before it gets to do the really powerful things. Well, I mm-hmm. think th- th- this is the one change that they did make that does sort of help the aggro decks do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that they changed this. Mm-hmm. I, I think for me too, like I'm not sure if I wanted to see the cost changed or the cards drawn changed. Cause I also would have liked if they had bumped it down to just draw two cards and still create um, something because I still think that would be a really strong card and I would still pay seven to draw two and create, you know, a body with taunt. Uh, I just, I don't know like which one would be more impactful. <laughs> Like I still think it would be played if it were two, we, but yeah, slowing it down a little bit does does help. We have a we have a druid card that does that. A seven mana five five ancient of lore draws two cards. Yeah, but that doesn't uh, give taunt. Yeah, and yeah, 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 but it doesn't give taunt. No, oh, but what I'm saying is is <laughs> yeah. if they would have changed the card, it would very much be in line with a card that right. already exists. Yeah. Um you know, so I, I I actually I think I feel like upping the mana cost makes it it 
does more to impact it. Yeah, I agree with that. Just because it adds it to nine, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm not going to disagree Heard with it. that. Do you want? Do, is there anything else you want to nuke from Orbit while you're up there? <laughs> nourish. While we're at it, yes, nourish. Yep, that one. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Those How do you feel about Jerry Rick Carpenter? <laughs> Eh, it's fine. I think it's fine. I think, I think nourish is really the big problem. Mm -hmm. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. Secure the supplies. The final quest portion of the warrior quest got up to three pirates. So now this quest came out as three pirates, two pirates, two pirates. And now it's three, six, nine. So yeah. Yeah. This is this is going to matter because it like the kind of the way the way the quest is built it, it does that the fact that you didn't have to do three on that last step always felt pretty easy to set up for seven mana because what you could do is you could have a a two mana pirate to be the last pirate and then you could play you know rakara that same turn for seven mana and, and it always seemed to work out pretty well in a lot of cases with that you could do that and, and so it's this is going to presumably make rakara take an extra turn to come down and, or make it so that like you know you're getting rakara but you're not able to play rakara uh immediately in a, in a lot of cases at least like on the seven mana six mana seven mana sort of situation um so it's it's just interesting that it's gotten hit twice now and i think it i think it needed it because that deck we talked about it last week at the lower ranks it's everywhere and and it's still really good it's still it was still really good at with eight pirate requiring eight pirates instead of seven pirates the um the freaking I forgot the name of the card. The three three that does two damage to two different targets. Defies uh, the the defies the, cannoneer. Yeah, the cannoneer is still yeah. just cannoneer with a weapon and like that second that second quest reward of the two additional shots. It just it is such a huge swing, and so like to have that on top of then almost immediately being able to play Rikara shortly thereafter, I it just feels really difficult to, I mean, to deal with. I mean, the, the, the power spikes came in being able to dredge, like the 2-3 pirate that allows you to dredge at the neutral one, but there's also the 3-2 that allows you to dredge and gives it plus one, plus one, um, if it's a weapon or um, a minion, which... That's pretty much all your deck is. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it was that those were the power spikes and amalgam replaced itself with a pirate in hand. So yeah. this needed, this needed to happen 100%. It was just way too easy to complete the third rung of that class, the, the quest ladder. So I am, I am happy to see it slow down another turn so but now my issue is i have a golden secure the docks which last time it got nerfed i i dusted my regular copy of secure the docks because i had two copies of the card so i'm like do i no i want the, i like the gold one too much to dust it for an extra 1600 dust it it uh both are in chat says it wasn't even a good deck though, but it, it was a good deck at, at lower ranks. If you if you looked at bronze, you looked at silver, you looked at gold, even into platinum in a lot of cases, a lot of people were playing the deck and and it had a very high like 55% win rate. And so yes, you're not seeing it at diamond ranks as much. You're definitely not seeing it at legend ranks and 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 definitely not a top legend ranks, but but they need to make sure that there's not some 800 pound gorilla at the lower ranks. Just like they need to make sure there isn't this big bad at, at the at the top ranks as well. And and 
it, it's one of those things where the deck is easy to build. It's very forgiving, I think, in a lot of cases to play in so far as you're basically like, I'm just trying to play a bunch of pirates and I'm trying to play them as mana efficiently as possible. And I'm trying to think about my turns in a, in a way that I'm, you know, hitting these breakpoints of playing three pirates in a way so that I can play Rakar as quickly as possible. And then once you get that value every turn from Rakara, it's very hard for other decks to to catch up if they don't have, you know, basically lethal on board that prevents you from playing Rakara at the time that you that you get her. Hmm. And do you, would you like to add anything, Dragon Rider? <laughs> no. Okay. I lost internet yeah. for a second there, so I yeah, had we to saw like that. get everything put it back up and missed a little bit of the conversation. But uh, yeah, it's uh, they do have to balance for for all of the ranks, and yeah, it's this is also like a case where similar to where we've seen like decks get nerfed even though they have like less than a 50 percent win rate you know decks that have the very high skill cap have gotten nerfed even though you don't see those like at the lower ranks at all you only see it at the top end this is kind of like mm -hmm. the reverse of that right like you're seeing yeah. it in very high percentage at the like lower ranks so it, it makes sense to nerf it they're trying to make sure that things are kind of more balanced across all of the board and I mean, if if it gets nerfed and it wasn't even being played at high legend, well, then nobody's yeah. gonna continue yeah. playing now. Like it just it right. stays the same at, at that higher legend, anyways. So I think this it, is it also it also is a, a a nod to wild as well. That deck is a menace over in wild, um, yeah. and and so yeah. because of the, the really cheap merits over there, uh, we did also see puffer fist go from a three four to a three three, which means now there's a lot more things that can that can easily kill this it can't value trade nearly as well um and so this i it's it, it's a hit to 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 the questline warrior it hits the demon hunter that's been really popular it uh you know it also sort of hits pirate rogue as well which probably didn't need a nerf at this point but uh but yeah, I, I for for cards like Puffer Fist and like Cannoneer and that 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 do kind of like an AOE or some extra damage on top of the body itself, uh, there really should be. We we actually talked about this before the show. We have these value cards and we have tempo cards, and it feels like Puffer Fist and Cannoneer and stuff. Um, well, specifically Puffer Fist did not feel like the uh value that it was giving you that one damage aoe was not being accounted for in the tempo portion of the card it was a spider tank it was a three four <laughs> yep it was hard to kill yep on three mana and yep. it gave you this value of of the aoe as well because you were probably attacking if you were playing the card because because of uh how good it is so the fact that it's now a three three means that a lot of two mana spells can kill it and some two mana minions can kill it and, and that so it, it makes the card a lot a lot um a lot easier to kill and, and makes it uh you have to think about how you're playing it now a little bit more too because a lot of times as a three four you could just play it on three even if you weren't going to attack this turn because you knew it wasn't necessarily going to get killed right away and now it's going to be more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I like this nerf a lot. I really do. Like Puffer Fist being at three, four was just like the, it's like, oh my God, why is this card for health? Why does it have four health? It doesn't need four health. <laughs> so I enjoy Puffer Fist. I don't think that it'll stop people from playing Puffer Fist, which is, an ideal situation because it'll yeah. still see play. It still mm. does a lot. It's just much easier to deal with. So, so yeah. Dragon Rider, any thoughts on on the puffer fist change? 
I like it. And this was another one where I, I think I also would have liked if they had changed it so that the damage does not hit face and it would have just hit uh, minions. But I think you'd still have the onboard issue that you talked about where, you know, you're dealing this AOE damage to the board and oftentimes they're killing some stuff anyways. So it's like, well, it still would be a little difficult to deal with. And uh, so I think ultimately the changing the health on it is probably just better. But, you know, I, I think I also would have been fine with it <laughs> not hitting face. That's fair. That is a fair point. All right. So Switcheroo did get changed now instead of trust swapping health and attack it's just doing the health um this is because you can use the card and swap uh i think in standard it was the it was the twin fin the the three mana two one and then they were playing it with like death wing and so then uh you'd get two of the two ones by the way with with a divine shield and so you would play switcheroo with deathwing and this twin fin in your deck and suddenly your twin twin fin was a three mana 12 12 that gave you two three mana 12 12s with rush and divine shield which seems absolutely ridiculous and like it's not a deck that i think was winning a ton of games or anything but it's one of those things that it's like it feels really bad to lose to so let's let's do something about this and and they've in fact banned this thing completely in wild yeah because because of the darkness a a <laughs> four mana 2020 <laughs> that is dormant it's supposed to be dormant but if you switch it with say oh i don't know a stone tusk boar that can go face for one mana suddenly you have a one mana rush or one I... mana charge of 2020 don't see what the problem is here. <laughs> I I primarily used it as uh draw on like the shellfish, the selfish shellfish deck. Um also it I mean I I enjoyed having zero mana seven sevens. <laughs> mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> it was only one of them, but yeah, like it it's still gonna see play. Um it still draws two cards in priest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seems seems legitimate. So I think especially because a lot of the, the priest cards sometimes you're just playing them for the battle cry anyways, or their effect. It doesn't it doesn't really matter what Zyrella's health is if she's clearing a board. Right. So no, that makes sense. But yeah, I think I think with the the fringe cases of like the let's just call it like a barn scenario. <laughs> <laughs> um that that this makes a lot of sense yeah it's okay, pretty so interesting because i don't think we've seen it a lot like in standard quite as powerful as it was in wild so yeah it definitely makes sense but uh you know I, i'm always curious on some of these changes like do they do a bit of testing and think okay if we nerf this thing like they know one nerf and then they test and they're like ooh, maybe we should adjust this along with it because otherwise that's gonna just become crazy i don't know I don't know how much they they get to do with that but uh you know i switching both stats was a little <laughs> a little interesting i think uh i like i like this one yeah all right so so i mean we've talked about this a little bit what what classes or decks do you think get hit hardest by these i mean druid, it, druid right? yeah druid druid's gotten hit and hit the hardest yeah. it's just I mean, it does, but also we talked about the fact that, like, you could probably just not even play Kazakhstan and all the other stuff. It's yeah. going to be really good. So it's like, uh, I don't know. Like, yes, it feels like it's hitting Druid, but at the same time, it doesn't. It, and that's it, feels, like, it feels like it's hitting Druid right now. So it might not yeah. feel like Druid got hit at all yes. in a couple of weeks. So here, here's, my, here's my counter to that also, is that, yes, you're right. They they're probably gonna take out Kazakhstan and just run, you know, Oracle, Naga, Battle Masters. But at least now they can't run Oracle, Naga, Battle Master, and Kazakhstan. <laughs> like they can't do that anymore. Yeah. They can't hit you with two giant emphases after playing 
four four uh, g- four to six giants and a battle master. And then yeah. after you clear all that up, they go, that's fine. Here's Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah. Did I get Ra- uh, Embers of Ragnaros? You bet your ass I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play that right after I play my book that I got as well. Exactly. I get to play for free. Uh, so do you think the right cards got hit? Um, Some of them, yes. Like, I think Puffer Fist was a good, uh, a good nerf. I think the... The, the quest pirate was a good nerf. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, Kazaka san doesn't feel like the issue in Druid. Miracle growth, a little bit more, but like, it doesn't feel like it's that game changing. Like, I know it's going to suck if you're a Druid and you want to play that on seven to like stabilize or on turn eight with a, you know, uh, earthen scale. But I, I still feel like it's not going to break the bank in that deck. You still have Vates. You still have Guff. It's still, you still have Wild Gross. You still have uh, uh, Nurture, or what is it? God, the, the five mana card. The one that you hate, Dragon Rider. Nourish. Nourish, there we go. Yeah. Name slipped away from me. But yeah, you still have Nourish. You have all this stuff to keep, just keep you going. So it just feels like the to me the culprit is scales like scales and guff are the car culprit it's not that and you said that you're like yes druids for idea is ramp they can ramp to 20 mana 20 mana <laughs> two zero literally that's, that's twice. like twice as much yeah, as, 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 any as other, you as any other class could do yeah. as any other class they have to play their hero card that costs five um oh darn shucks guess i'm gonna have to play this guff because you know all it does is you know give me empty mana crystals every turn or draws cards it literally does (laughs) everything druid wants and Mm -hmm. and then scale is just like oh am i losing yeah let's just clear that board and start over again like you're not getting back on board in any meaningful in meaningful fashion so you're just going to lose it's just i'm going to keep pushing you out of the game i'm going to keep stabilizing until i win and then they have oracle of loon and free naga giants and which I've- summons- yeah, and I was on <laughs> top of it like it's just ridiculous there's so many other things Okay, Dargan. Um, are we? <laughs> is there any other like? Okay, I get Druid, but is there any other class or any other? Is there any other class card that you were thinking might should have been looked at that that isn't Druid? I'm surprised. I, 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 know I was I, I actually been hearing Al- Alkali because he was just <laughs> doing that, but you get you, yes. you're gonna you're gonna get your moment in a minute. Yes, because you brought one up before the show of a card that you thought may maybe should have been considered. Uh yes, uh, I I was kind of concerned about Spite Lash Siren, the Naga yeah. Mage uh, Enabler, the the one that allows you to pay like thirty mana worth of stuff in a single turn, like uh, that card has me very nervous. I've had some. Of the most disgusting plays that have happened to me on turn five, um, in quite some time, and that's including Druid. Like the the, the only thing that rivals it is playing Kazakhstan on turn five. But like getting to do as much as you can on turn five, we were like, eh, you know, it's not gonna. They're not gonna be able to ride that train. Nope, they can literally ride it until they are out of board spaces. They literally do not stop until they are out of board spaces. I want to hear how this is okay now. This is like super feels bad because it's just like, oh, I get to watch my opponent do all this stuff. And I have, if I don't have a board clear handy on turn five that can clear, uh, what is the spite lash is a three or two five? Two five yeah, yeah two if, five. if I can't clear at least a two five, if I don't have five damage AOE in my hand ready to go to clear that board on turn five, then well, I just lost the game. 
that that is that is a very yeah. feels bad and like i've seen pros hail this as like an incredible like the best deck and i'm like that's when that's when they need to start looking at that card i'm not i'm not a big fan of of high apm cards and that that is by yeah. far a high apm card and uh you know i there's definitely some skill for playing that card it it is skill testing that deck but it's it also is just like how many actions can you do? How many things can you queue up while the while the while the uh, the rope is burning? That sort of thing. Okay, Dragon Rider. <laughs> okay, now I did know. they nerf the right cards? <laughs> oh well. Okay, I guess I'll just say Druid collectively. I it's for me. It's the core set cards. Nourish. They uh. Wow. I'm totally drawing blank. Like it's, they brought back a couple of cards, wrath, nourish, where now because of things like guff that was already in here, the scale of anixia, it feels like druid can do all the things. And for those of you who have heard me talk, I, I really don't like decks that can do all of the things. Like there should be something the decks are bad at. And yes, decks, like druid decks can suffer against aggressive decks but now with things like the wrath they kind of have an answer uh all of the armor gain that we were so excited was going away well they still kind of have that at the end anyways so it's like it doesn't really feel like much changed with druid and i think for me like that's that's kind of the issue uh so in terms of that, like, I, I know they weren't going to hit a, a core set card, but I wish they would have. <laughs> um, the other ones I think are totally fine. I am a little interested that they didn't, and they did mention uh, Demon Hunter, that it didn't get hits, but that they were going to keep an eye on it, that they're aware that, like, aggressive Demon Hunters specifically can kind of be problematic. Um, and I'm also interested that they didn't touch Hunter, uh, like qu uh, Quest Hunter stuff specifically. Because I think Demon Hunter and Quest Hunter, for me, are also kind of the other classes that are like, ooh, I'm really surprised that those didn't get touched. Uh, so I'm I'm really, I don't know, though, what I would change at the moment. Like, I'm not, there's not one thing that's like, oh, that needs to change. Like, like Darian was just talking about with Mage. Like, he can pinpoint the specific card. But for me, I'm like, I'm not sure exactly what uh, would need to change. I think maybe for Quest Hunter, it would have to be similar probably to the changes they made to the Warrior Quest yeah. line. Where yeah, 100%. Just, you know, make it, like, three on a couple or all of them. But, you know, even the first couple, I think. Um, because the big thing is getting to the zero cost hero power. I think that's when the second stage complete, you get the zero cost and you can target it wherever you want. Um, so maybe the first and or second part of the quest needs to be additional spells played to complete it. Um, so I'm, I'm a little surprised that they didn't touch those, but we'll see. Cause I, I do think those can be very powerful. So I think those would be the next ones. I, I'm really yeah. curious to see what's gonna happen after. <laughs> well, I mean, the patch came out, so like after post post changes, now what decks we're really gonna see start to rise up? Because I okay, if Druid, if Druid if Druid actually does cut down the number, if the number of Druids does cut down on ladder because of the the changes that occur. That was one of the big reasons that Quest Hunter was not being played. That's part of the reason yep. I think, uh, you know, the Naga Face Hunter wasn't seeing as much play because it just really could not handle the Druid matchup at all. And and it's one thing if you have one bad matchup. So say you have the aggro, aggro Demon Hunter, right? If you have one bad matchup, it's like, okay, I have this bad matchup, but if I do okay versus everything else, I could probably get by. But if you have two bad matchups and they're two of the most prominent decks on ladder it means that it's pretty much doa you you really probably can't play it 
But if one of those goes away, it's really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how much Druid goes away and how much of a result that has on some of those other classes that were being held down uh, by by the Druid and what it was doing. Are you are you surprised that Demon Hunter didn't get more of a anything more than say a collateral nerf with the puffer fist change? It, it seems like so. I was playing that deck over the last week or so, and it was one of the first decks that I played uh, post uh, the rotation. And it's getting to be very, very popular uh, in the like the la over the weekend and stuff. It's it's getting to be very popular, and so I'm I'm a little surprised that it that it didn't get at least something touched with these set with this set of balance changes. I I think I I honestly think that this this change uh will allow some of the slower decks to get back into the meta and that will some of the control -y decks like control warrior I think is a much more viable deck and that will shut down um yeah. the, the aggressive demon hunter and it's yeah. not going to make it a bad deck it's just going to be there are things that will be there to fight back against uh the demon hunter so i think this is a good change i or nothing not really hitting demon hunter i think they have a good mentality and i feel like they have a good track record with the speed of making changes so like if it becomes super oppressive i expect them to act quickly sure yeah yeah i i I think it seems reasonable that they didn't change anything. And like I said, there, there's not anything that is like kind of speaking. That's like, Oh, this is so strong or really needs to be adjusted. It's, it is like a, like you said, with the matchups and uh, yeah, we're even seeing it in chat. Like DH isn't really on balance. It just was really good and is really good against fluid. And because of the popularity of that, it makes it seem like it's, you know, much better, but yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, Control Warrior and Control Paladin will probably become more uh, prevalent. And yeah, Demon Hunter feels real bad. Feels real bad against yeah. those decks. Yeah, it does. So, I, can, uh, I can attest to that. I can definitely yeah. attest to that. So I think if, if those come back, yeah, Demon Hunter, yeah, not, not so great. So final, final question. What do you think... How, how do you think these changes are going to affect the Masters Tour this weekend? Um, I feel like, hmm, that's a good question. So nor, nor, a lot of people are going to swerve away from, I would imagine a lot of people will swerve away from Druid because that's generally something you see like right after the Masters Tour. And then one of the like, uh, some of the like winner lineups are going to have Druid in it and they're going to be like, you know, there's like, Oh, it turns out Druid's still really good. So that would be my guess. Um, but there might, they, people might fit in like the more controlly decks like we're talking about and being uh, maybe having a slower lineup. And then you might see some other people go the opposite and just go turbo aggressive that won the last master's tours. So Dragon Rider, what do you think? You're you're the expert here. <laughs> I think more than any yep. of us. What All do you, right. What do you think? I think people won't swerve away from Druid. They will just swerve away from Kazakasan Druid, like we talked about. I think. I mean, I was even seeing it today before the nerfs. Uh, but yeah, things like Oracle and Ivis. I saw somebody had two twenty something Divine Shield taunts. Is like what? What, what is this? Like, there's still so much. And like you're talking about multiple 8-8s, multiple big boards, uh, armor gain. Um, I think that uh, it won't be <coughs> Druid that leaves. I think it will just be Kazakasan leaving from Druid. Uh, but what I do expect to see is some weapon removal because of Cariel. And um, I think we will also see a rise in the uh, the Starfish that silences all of oh yeah definitely yeah because of things like ivis and and just some other taunt stuff so i think um i think we will probably see some silence and some weapon removal and 
paladin. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, like, that's my I can that. I but but I think we can all agree we're not going to be seeing warlock anytime soon. It does sort of seem like that poor yeah. class, and I don't want to just you know like touchdown shuffle on the on the curse deck, but no, that curse deck's really not doing much of anything, is it? But no. you know what you can do with Warlock? You can play a selfish shellfish and taz, <laughs> ta, a Tamsin's phylactery and fatigue people to death. You can, though. Sure. No. I, I have been doing that. <laughs> because I've needed some other new way to be a degenerate <laughs> and do like 200 and some damage. <laughs> uh <laughs> Oh, I'm okay. sorry, D Style. I, I did not mean to cause offense with the warlock comment. I just <laughs> I I just wanted to be that was a subtle nod to the fact that I thought the curse deck was going to be terrible, and it seems at least the initial uh versions of it seem to not have performed very well. So why why don't we jump into the QA? Yes, let's do it. Yes. All right. So yes, feel free, uh, anybody that is in the chat to post your questions. We do have a few here already. So we will start with these. Uh, we have Run Reset Run says, do you have a great question? With new heroes constantly coming out in BGs, which famous WoW character would you love to see next? Ooh, I like this question. I... have <laughs> I want to play more battlegrounds. <laughs> I just haven't had time. Ah, uh, huh. That's well. That's I'm gonna very... I'm gonna start by saying I think Leroy Jenkins needs to be a, a oh. battlegrounds hero. <laughs> now that we have a hero portrait for Paladin, yes. I think we need to see. And we have Leroy Jenkins and mercenaries. I think we need to have Leroy Jenkins in in battlegrounds as well. That that's definitely one that has to happen um for me let's say again gray main like we he'd already got a you know obviously a, a famous hero or you know card in the witchwood but i think he's a really cool character i mean also i'd like to see and to win because i'm a, i'm a sucker for the rin family i i love the rins so like i'd love to see either anduin or varian but like Outs but those already are kind of like in the game. So I'm like, I'd like to see Gen Greymane in there. Okay, I think Does... I... Well, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, I think I have to say Sylvanas. So I don't think okay. there's been a Sylvanas, right? So like there hasn't no. standard, but in battlegrounds, Correct. I don't think so. And I just I love Sylvanas. Uh yeah. Uh Chen Storm Stout, the the panda brewmaster okay. thing right. from from uh, from Pandaria would be another character that I would like to see, who's pretty popular I think in WoW that I would like to see uh, in the battlegrounds as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then next, another one from Run Reset Run. Guess I have another question. Do you think Kazakasan should still trigger with an empty deck? No. Uh, this is a really interesting, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> really no. interesting question. <laughs> I I have gone on that hill a thousand times before. Do I have to die on it one more time? This should be a yes. beginning of the uh, game trigger effect. Like running out your deck should not be a deck challenge. Like that's what that rewards a deck building challenge. Running out, drawing your entire deck is not a challenge that like, that's what every deck wants to do. Like it, they wants to, you know, get all their cards and play all their cards. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I jumped the gun on that one. <laughs> Mage. No, I want to hear I, not. <laughs> No offense, Derek. I'd like to hear some more, uh, you know, calm, rational <laughs> thoughts on, on, on this. Oh, well, if he, if if I wasn't getting triggered by questions, I would I could remain <laughs> calm. Oh, I I don't. I mean, like, I don't necessarily think 
that the current the previous iteration of Kazakhstan when it said your deck only contains contains dragons i don't know that it necessarily should trigger if your deck is empty yes it it technically i guess is sort of roundabout accurate but it 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 doesn't feel like it was the spirit of the card and so i you know i now we don't have that effect now it's you have to play four and so if if you played four and Kazakazan's the last card in your deck, I think it should definitely trigger. Yeah, this one has been really interesting to me because I know we've been talking about it a lot in my stream too, and it's like, I don't really know how I feel about it because on one hand, I do kind of like that you can use it as like that late game win condition, kind of like we had with Aliciana kind of thing, but at the same time, it's like, it doesn't seem like that's how the card was intended to be used necessarily and at, at that point it does almost feel like a win more like a you know like i don't know i think one big thing is that you can just speed draw through your deck and then get that effect which makes it feel frustrating <laughs> i'll say so I think in, in that case, I don't like it. I think if uh, if you're not like turbo drawing through your deck and then you play it and you're, you know, you're on like turn 20 or something ridiculous, you know, the game's gone on really long and then your deck is empty and you play it. I feel like that's fine. But the cases where you just get to draw through your deck super fast, then play it because your deck's empty and then you get all that. That doesn't feel great. So I think ultimately, if I if I had to make a decision and say, should it or not? Probably not. All right. And our next question. What decks are y'all excited to try now that Druid is less dominant? We'll, we'll see how that works out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am excited. I feel like this opens up the door for Control Warrior. And I had some fun playing Control Warrior before the rotation. So I would like to continue playing some more Control Warrior and see how it how it fares. So that's the deck I I have a Control Warrior built. And I was waiting for the changes to go live today, and I didn't have a chance to play it. So, but I I'm planning on playing some Control Warrior and seeing how it does. I'm actually interested in trying Paladin now with Kazakasan being the win condition of that deck. I think that uh, I, I I don't think that that car I don't think Control Paladin seemed that interesting to me because I didn't know how it would win games specifically against Druid. But now that Druid might not be playing Kazakazan as much, and the fact that I could include it along with the other uh, tools and toys that uh, Paladin has access to, I think uh, I think I'm interested in that. Yeah, I man, I thought about Paladin too. I want <laughs> I still I want mid-range Paladin to be good. I don't want to play control Paladin with Cario. Blech, you. I don't hey. want to play against it either even more, but ugh, that's just it's not my like Reasonable. preferred play style. So I'm like, I don't want to play it. <laughs> I like control. So I know I, I'm I down. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, I'm not good at control, it. but I will but but you know. All the fun toys I want to I want to try it at least a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, for me though, I'm kind of I don't know exactly what deck, but I'm hoping I want to try more shaman. I played quite a bit of shaman with like elemental shaman and doomhammer elemental shaman in the last like couple expansions, and I want to try more shaman. Uh, I did get a deck redeemed during my stream today to play some burn shaman, and uh, I. If, talking about APM, oh my, it was, I had like one of the worst games that I've ever played and I still won. And I was like, how, how did I even do this? Like one turn I roped and missed 17 damage to face. Oh like, yeah. It was bad. It was, it was like one of the worst games I've ever played. I was like, that was so sloppy, but it was, I still won. And it was like, okay, there's, there is something here for sure. And I, I can't remember, but I think that was against a druid as well. 
So like I got through their armor and big boards because I was able to freeze their boards, even though they went wide. Um, but like I, I want to experiment more and play some more shaman because I, I feel like shaman just kind of fell off. I'm like, no, shaman. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what list though. I would also huh. say I'm, I I want to play Fell Demon Hunter. That was a deck that I wanted to play last expansion before before rotation, and and I didn't really get to it because it was more of an APM deck than I necessarily think that I'm good at and want to try and do. But I think the newer iteration, the the post rotation iteration of the deck, I think is less contingent on being able to do the big turn with the expendable performers and the hero power in that. And so I, I want to I, I want to experiment with that deck a little bit more. I like the hero card um, for the Kurtris hero card and want to, want to play around with it uh, some more, even if Aggro Demon Hunter ends up not being as good after all the druids kind of go away. So... We have another question. I, I see that, but I, I do want to note D style. I do like Warlock. I cut my teeth on Warlock, Zoo Warlock <laughs> specifically, and love Zoo Warlock. And if Zoo Warlock was good right now, that would be something I wanted to play. I was very high on the opportunity that uh, Murloc Warlock might work. I was really hoping it would work, but it has not really worked. Uh, just like the curse deck really hasn't worked very well. Uh, but I will say this. I have died to Murloc Warlock more times than I've died to Curse Warlock so far <laughs> this expansion. Wait, did you I don't wow. see I don't seem to remember you posting about in Discord. I no, because you said I had to post about a curse warlock, a death to curse warlock. Have I did you not, not die to curse warlock. Okay. It was zero. I have <laughs> one loss. To a Murloc Warlock. Okay. I have zero losses Fair. to a Curse Warlock. <laughs> so okay. ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll put, oh. I better not hear about you dying to Curse no. Warlock and not posting about if, it. If I do, I will let the Discord and you guys know immediately. Okay, good. Yes. Phew. All right. Yes. Mage said there was another question. Let's get to that. Uh, what card in standard is something that really sucks, but you want to see succeed really badly? Oh, this is my kind of question. Yes. Okay. This is, I honestly, like, I don't even remember the name of the card now, but way back when there was the, the I think it was, four four treasure chest thing that like gave your opponent cards i don't know i wanted that to succeed or the zero four maybe it was <laughs> i wanted that to i wanted that to succeed so badly um but this set i think um i really want to see i'm gonna choose not a uh colossal even though i think <laughs> part of me is so, like i want some real, real quick i think you're talking about toothy adventure the o4 that starts uh that turns into a four four on your uh next turn no there was a there was a treasure chest it was like a chest i can't re i can't remember the stats of it now i mean this was oh my god it was three years ago uh-huh a long time ago and it's but it was it was bad this is the toothy treasure, the toothy chest. It's a three, Sour? three. Yeah, it's a chest. It's a literal. It's a mimic. It, it's you know, it's got the teeth and a long tongue. And it's a three mana zero four at the start of your turn. Set this minion's attack to four. No, that wasn't it. No. Well, and then I don't Arena know what you're chest? talking about. Arena chest, Flo floop and chest saying that. Arena chest, two mana zero four death rattle draw two cards. Yeah. That was oh it. <laughs> okay. That was what I wanted to see succeed. Gotcha, no, I, gotcha. I think okay. One card that like it, it's seen a little play, but uh, what I really think that I want to to see be really good is uh, uh, a Sharon Mooncatcher in Paladin. It's the uh, the three mana four two mech with divine shield, and then you put the sunken Mooncatcher on the bottom. People played that like the first couple of days when people were trying like Mech Paladin, but then ever since then it's like just gone away. But I want that card to be so good. 
That's it. That's mine. Mine is definitely Curse of Agony and Warlock. Not the actual curses, but the one that puts fatigue in your opponent's deck. So I like that a lot, especially because you can you can put like 12 of them in, in their deck with uh, uh, Tamsin. So like, I like that concept. That's a cool, like, you put stuff in their deck and they just have too much control of drawing cards, but still, I, I want that. Okay, so there is two cards that are in the core set that are now in standard that were good at one time that are not good so far that I want to see good again before while they're during during the year of the Hydra. The first is Tar Creeper. I am a huge fan of the Tar Creeper art. I've got the art actually as a photo on my wall and I love the card. I thought it was going to be a card that it would actually see play in standard, but Treasure Guard seems to be taking that spot right now in a, in a lot of situations because, again, it's a 1-5. Um, it's got Taunt, but it draws a card, which I think is... And it's a Naga, so it helps with the Naga synergies that, that, that you might have going on as well. So that card is a card that is in standard right now. It was good the last time it was in standard, and I hope it becomes good in standard again. The same goes to Houndmaster Shaw is one of my favorite legendaries because it was uh, a, a card that I did I played a lot because it was one of the only legendaries I had on my on my free to play account. So far, it's not seeing any play in any hunter deck in in standard since since the rotation. I love that card, and I really hope that it actually sees some play in standard again. And then um, as far as like a card from from standard, like in an expansion, I I really liked um Korak, the the Blood Rager, the four mana three five that had a death rattle. If it wasn't honorably killed, you would resummon it, that legendary. I always liked that card. I liked the fact that it would just be this like infinite loop of guy, you know, guys that you wouldn't be able to get off the board unless you did exactly five attack to it. But the card really hasn't seen any play, even in when we had something like Death Rattle, uh, Demon Hunter be good. That card really didn't see play there. And so my hope is that at some point this year that this card might be might be good enough to see some play. Okay. I think that's about it, right? I think so. But before we wrap up our Q&A, I think uh, I would like to propose a question to our audience. And what I want to do, what I want to propose here is that, uh, you know, if... If you have been enjoying the show, if you've enjoyed the content that we do, would you please, please follow us on Twitter if you haven't, jump in our Discord, tell a friend about the show. Uh, I, I'm totally like, whatever, if you want to call this sellout mode, I don't care. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, but uh, Alkali had talked about the creator program that they're going to be coming out with. And we really would love to be able to apply for that. We don't know anything about what the requirements yet are, the minimums and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we, this is episode 150. I joined mm -hmm. around episode 60s. So like you guys have been doing this even longer, <laughs> but, you know, we are here each and every week and, you know, we've started to do these live episodes a little bit more. We're going to keep those going. It's, it's great to interact with everybody, but you know, I, I would say, please, if you, you know, if you really enjoy what we're doing, then please help us grow our, our audience and get more people in here. I don't know. It's not really a question, but if you enjoy this, can you help us spread, you know, spread and, and share our content with other people? That would be it's awesome. A question, I guess, but sure. It's a, <laughs> it's a question. It's a question. <laughs> Yes. Well, speaking of questions, I believe Mage has a question. Mage? Yes. Yeah, so we have a poll question for this week. We, we've talked about the balance changes. 
we talked about the balance changes for druids specifically uh for a, a decent amount of the episode but we want to know from you do you think the balance changes specifically to druid will be enough and whatever you think as far as what enough is like does that mean less druids on ladder does it mean we're not seeing Kazakhstan and Druid, whatever it is. Do you think it will be enough? Or do you think we're going to be talking about more balance changes needed for Druid uh, very soon? So simple yes or no. We also have a not sure as an option. Please vote. Tell us what you think. And we will share the results on next week's show. Speaking of the show, you can find us on Twitter at Dr3HS. You can email the show at Dr3HS at gmail.com. To join our Discord, follow our top pin tweet. And you can find me on Twitter at Daring Alkaline and on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Daring Alkaline. I've been doing lunch streams around noon EST and then a few other days during the week. I just had a really fun stream last night. We were playing Space Quest 2 and 3 uh, with my friend Pixie Boot, and we had a lot of fun. So, like, if you like like this content and you want to see a little bit more of me, uh, follow me on Twitch, and uh, you'll get notifications of when I go live. Dragon Rider. Yes, you can find me on Twitter at Donnie DK, D-A-W-N-I-E-D-K, on Twitch and YouTube, Dragon Raider DK, like pretty much all over the place. I don't know, like <laughs> just everywhere. You know the places. You, you just know, look for yeah. Dragon Dragon Rider DK, <laughs> Dragon right. Rider KZ. Exactly. <laughs> let's let's yeah. go full out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, look out for some tournaments and some more stuff uh, coming out with my. Uh, YouTube and all of that as well. But uh, in five weeks as well, you can see me in person if you want to meet me at DreamHack Dallas. I'm super excited for that. Uh, so I did get, I, I don't think we talked about this last week because I think it was announced later, but uh, it's all official now. I have been officially invited as a creator to be there. So Ooh, uh, yeah, very nice. so it's, uh, it's going to be exciting. You know, I like, put in a request for actually like an interview space. So I don't know what that's going to look like, but hopefully it'll look like very professional when I kind of do some uh, interview recordings while I'm there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. There's, there is a Hearthstone tournament there, $1,200 price pool. And the winner will be getting an invite for a master's tour. So if you want to come compete, hang out, stop in one of the days, you know, would love to meet some, some of you in person. And Mage, take us home. Sure. So you can find me on Twitter talking about Hearthstone, the various modes, D&D, &D, uh, baseball, whatever. Uh, I am at Mage of Death, and you can hear me talking about comic books and specifically the character Moon Knight as the uh, series TV series of Disney Plus continues called Moon Knight on the Phases of the Moon Knight podcast that releases on Tuesdays and then a TV show recap on Fridays. Uh, you can find links to all of that on our Twitter, and that is at Phases of MK. Okay. And a big, big thanks to everyone who hung out during the live stream. Yeah. If you listen to this after Yay. the fact, thank you as well. We love everyone who listens to this show, and we greatly appreciate you being here. Um, and as always, you've been listening to Doctor Three. The first hundred and fifty were so much fun. Let's do another. Boom.